concern of fourth module, it's about uh, the novel of Rizal, no? So, Noli Matanchere. So, possibly, mas nauna itong novel na ito kaysa sa discussion natin before as regard to ano, no? Okay? Wait lang, no? Need you... Okay. So, as regard to the voice, uh, narinig ba? May I check? May I check kung nakikita yung presentation on the same time? Narinig nyo ako? Clear yes, ba? po, sir. Okay, thank you. Yes, po, oh, po sir. Okay, thank you for confirming, no? So, let's start. So for our chapter, uh, rather for our module four, no, the emphasis it's more of no limitangere, no. So probably you are familiar uh, with this work of Rizal, no, familiar kaysa no limitangere, no. And of course, pag sinabi natin no limitangere, so it's the first novel of Rizal. So for today, we will try to know the uh, some facts, no, various facts as regard to no limitangere. So. Bakit nga ba no limit tangere yung title niya no? So sa dinabi daming pwedeng gawing title, why no limit tangere? So probably uh, some of you are already an idea why it is a no limit, why no limit tangere. In our previous discussion, I mentioned that no limit tangere was uh right result start writing it when he was in Madrid and that is in 1884 no. So probably after he earned his degree in the Universidad Central de Madrid no leading to or pursuing a medical course leading to ophthalmology no okay so when was rizal no in 1884 that was the time where in rizal no began to write the novel no limitangere no and that is in madrid spain in 1885 while he was traveling in paris no and had its sasabi na natin in turn i will use the word in turn no so or OJT, no. So in Paris, while he has his OJT with Doctor Louis de Record, he finished the half of the second half of the novel, no. So kung sixty four chapters and or sixty five chapters, so natapos na yung one fourth, no. Okay. Please mute your microphone, please. On April to June in the summer of eighteen eighty six, no. He stayed in Wilhelmsfield, no? So, nag-stay siya sa Wilhelmsfield. So, okay, I will mute your microphone muna, okay? Nandiyan siya nag-interrupt siya, okay. So, in Wilhelmsfield, uh, through the help of its friends, si Ferdinand Dumentrit, uh, Rizal was able to stay, no? Or, he stayed uh, in the front of Ferdinand Dumentrit, kay Dr. Uh, Carl Ulmer, or he's also a pastor, Pastor Carl Ulmer, no, next day siya doon for, for the month of April to June, and in Wilhelmsfield, Germany, uh, Rizal wrote the last few chapters of the novel, No Limit Tangere, no? And finally, on February 21, 1887, No Limit Tangere was, uh, uh, he finished writing its novel, No Limit Tangere, and read the for printing. So, kung titignan natin, no, as you can see, uh, in the making, it, uh, it, it's almost three years in the making, no, yung novel. So, in ano yung novela for almost three years. Okay? Uh, when each novel is ready uh, for printing, in the Christmas day of 1887, no, so probably uh, Rizal is somehow it's living in poverty and it was sickly due to lack of proper nourishment. Because this is the time wherein its brother Pasiano, no, uh, could not send the allowance that he uh, that he supposed to uh, support to Rizal, no. Because at that time, nagkaroon ng parang 
what we call uh, locust uh, infestation in the Philippines. No, actually, not only in the Philippines at the time, no, but it's the sugar uh, cane na tanim ni Pasya, uh, ni Pasya, no, were affected. In 1887, the Christmas Eve, no, that was also the time where in the sun is contemplating to print its novel, Noli Me Tangere. Uh, kaya lang, uh, parang he was ano, no, uh, frustrated because he has no money to print it. So sabi nga, parang gusto niya itapon na lang or punitin. And then of course, uh, a friend from Bulacan, no, si Maximo Viola, so learning the situation of Rizal. And then if he, ano, he, he committed, no, or somehow, uh, yes, he committed na to support Rizal, no, so to support him as regard to the printing of its novel. Yung nga, no, Maximo Viola agreed to finance the printing cost of Noli Metangere. So, somehow, no, parang naging ano si Rizal na ibsan yung ano niya, no, so na ibsan yung kanyang frustration as regard to the printing of its novel. However, in the time, no, uh, since they uh, kulang yung ano niya, finances niya, so they decided to delete, no, the original chapter, the original chapter twenty-four uh, about Elias and Salome. No, they deleted it, so, of course, due to lack of fund or cost cutting sila. Kaya inalis na muna yung yung chapter na about Elias and Salome, no. Okay, so the original novel from 65 chapters, so somehow naging 64 chapters na lang siya, no? So ganun yung nangyari. Okay, so to continue, in 1888, the novel was printed in, in printing press, uh, Berliner, so that is in Berlin, no? Uh, but Rockway, Action Diesel Sap, no? Where in... Uh, the owner of the printing press uh, charged 300 pesos for 2,000 copies. So as you can see, no, napaka taas ng value ng pera noon. 300 pesos was able to print 2,000 copies, no? And of course, in 1888, March 21, so the novel of Rizal came off the press. So that means in Berlin, in, in Madrid, in Barcelona, so na ano siya, no? That's me pa, uh, it has been uh, uh, somehow it became an issue no, of the newspaper. Same year in the 1888, the first copies of Nelamitan no, so properly gave the first copies. Kung na natin kung sino yung the first copies, of course, we have Ferdinand Blumentritt, si Dr. Antonio Regidor, si Lopez Aina, no, si Cristiano Lopez Aina, of course, si Mariano Pons, and Felix Resurrection Hidalgo. So, Yung mga, yun ang na, na nila, no? And of course, in March 29, 1888, so, so probably as yeah, a type of gratitude, Rizal gave the Gallic group of No Limitanger to Maximo Viola. So the original handwritten of Rizal, no, na parang drop niya or, or something, uh, probably hindi na drop yun, no? So yung original handwritten ng No Lib, uh, he gave it to Maximo Viola. So those are some facts as regard to the printing of the novel, No Limitanchere, no? Okay, to continue. A while ago, I asked why it is No Limitanchere, no? Bakit nga ba No Limitanchere yung title ng kanyang first novel? So probably most historian, no, agreed that or affirmed that it's a Latin phrase which means touch me not, no? So in our discussion, no? Before, as regard to hearts of translation, of course, majority ng Noli Metangere, it's written in Spanish. But there are some Latin words, sing, uh, like, like uh, of course, there are Latin words, like the title itself. And in certain chapter also, there's a Latin word, uh, as well as what we call French word, no, na ginamit Rizal. Now, why it is Noli Metangere? So, according to uh, Manuel Chua, no, si... Uh, Chua, no, in 2018, sabi niya, Rizal's actually explained himself where he got the title in the letter of Felix Resurrection Hidalgo dated March 1887. Sino ba si Felix Resurrection Hidalgo? So, kung kilala niyo si Juan Luna as friend of Rizal and then a uh, known painter, of course, Felix, Felix Resurrection Hidalgo, the kid's also a painter, no? Known artist din siya, a uh, Filipino artist. Actually, during the contest, no, in Madrid, no, 
uh, si Luna um, nanalo siya na nanalo ng first prize yung kanyang spolarium. Si Hidalgo naman nanalo siya ng second prize yung kanyang uh, The Catholic Women or um, Exposed to Populace. No? So, and then in uh, doon babalikan ko lang yung discussion natin no? or probably hindi ko man na-mention to so noong June 24, 1888 they invited Rizal no? for what? Uh, for to honor them as regard to the triumph they have done in what we call Madrid for winning the what we call the National Art Competition in Madrid. Okay? So yun si Felix Resurrection Hidalgo. No? So title ng ano niya yung second place yung Virgin Woman Exposed to Populace. And later on, may confusion din dito, no? Before they said it is came from the Gospel of uh, of Saint Luke, no? And then uh, later on, the historian or yung known critic ni Rizal, si Ambeto Campo, then this, si Ambeto Campo corrected na it's not from the Gospel of Luke, but rather it came from the Gospel of John, chapter twenty, verse thirteen to seventeen. Kasi nung dating, they are not aware kung saan nga ba galing to. No, then of course from the letter of Rizal no sa kanyang diary nakita ni other historian like Chua nakita niya na pinuwa pala ni Rizal yun sa sa ano ni title na letter ni Felix Resurrection Hidalgo. But prior to that, alam nila it came from the Gospel of John kasi in the Gospel of John chapter 20 verse 13 to 17, Mary Magdalene tried to approach Jesus and tried to touch him, no? And then Jesus told him, do not touch me. So something like that, no limit tangere. Okay? Now, the title no limit tangere as regard for being do not touch me, how significant the title to what we call to the scenes or events in himself, no? from chapter 1 to chapter 64. No? Okay? So probably, ano kayong dahilan ni Rizal, why he used the title do not touch me. Okay? So probably there are many reasons, no? If we will refer in our uh, conditions or yung scenario natin ngayon, so somehow um, to make your work uh, very interesting, kailangan catchy siya, no? So pag no limit tangere, catchy siya, no? Kasi do not touch me. Bakit do not touch me? Something like that, no? Okay, continue. And when he wrote, is a uh, novel, so probably it dedicated this one to its fatherland. Later on, we will see the background behind its writing, no? In writing its novel. <clears throat> Ito, yung background niya, no? So, when Rizal was in Madrid in the year, of course, 1882 to 1887, nandun siya, no? Um, by 1884, that was the time, no? Uh, already, no? He already joined the Circle Hispano Filipino. And this organization, Circulo Hispano Filipino, somehow, parang they want to publish no, a novel or they want to publish a work no, that will uh, that will help the oppressed no, or to support the oppressed Filipino or people, not only the Filipino. No? And of course, uh, originally, according to Saide, no, sabi ni Saide, hindi lang dapat si Rizal yung magsusulat. There are other Filipinos, kasama na si Eduardo Lete, Mariano Pons, and so on. Those who are under the propaganda movement. Kaya lang, the other Filipinos, no, uh, na dapat kasama ni Rizal, so somehow hindi sila naging interested oh, no, in that. Uh, so only Rizal will pursue. And what inspired Rizal no, to motivate, or what inspired him or motivated him to write its novel, No Limitangere? So, according to the historian, Rizal was, uh, actually Rizal is a bookworm, no? Talagang mahilig siya magbasa. And sabi nga nila, one of the book, that, uh, among the books that he read or, or that he used as inspiration in writing the Noli Matangere ay yung work ni Harriet Beecher Stowe, yung Uncle Tom's Cave-In, no? And this, uh, to sum up this, ano, Uncle Tom's Cave-In, it's about slavery of the Black African, no, in the United States. And then, of course, the wandering Jews, the Eugene Sunaman, no? So those two novel, so somehow, no, uh, historians agreed, inspired Rizal to write its own novel. Of course, it's purpose, same, no? Same objective, yung to help the oppressed, particularly the oppressed Filipino, okay? 
to continue. So we are still in the facts of no limit time zero. No? So, <clears throat> so this one is according to Austin Craig, one of the uh, first biographer of Rizal. I think Austin Craig is an English biographer of Rizal. No, so according to Austin Craig, cited by Chua in 1888, sabi niya, early in his stay in Madrid, Rizal had come across a second-hand copy in two volume of a French novel, which he bought to improve its knowledge of that language. So yung work ni Yujin Su, The Wandering Jew, no? as I mentioned a while ago. That work which transformed the France of the 19th century, kasi yung Wandering Jew parang it's a novel na similar to Yujin Su. No? And the book he, he writes in his diary, so ito yung comment ni no? No? Austin, Austin Craig, sabi niya, the book he writes in his diary affected him powerfully, uh, not to tears, but with a tremendous sympathy for the unfortunate that made him willing to risk everything in their behalf. No, it seemed to him that such a presentation of Philippine condition would certainly arouse no, Spain, but his modesty forbade his saying that he was going to write a book like a French masterpiece. So historians are arguing, no, or somehow uh, nagaano sila dyan, nagdi-debate, no, yung <clears throat> Ano ba talaga yung naging basis ni Rizal? Yung kay Harriet Beecher Stowe, yung Uncle Tom's Cabin, or The Wandering Jews? Then later on, may nagko-comment din na I think it was the work of uh, Alexander Dumay naman, yung what we call The Count of Monte Cristo. No? Yun daw ang naging basis niya. Pero kung i-examine mo, The Count of Monte Cristo, very ano siya, related siya sa kanyang second novel, no? yung El Filibusterismo. Okay? So to continue, so somehow, no, uh, yun ang mga nangyayari at that time, no, or, or some of the facts about the novel no limit tangere. Di naman sinunat ni Rizal for what we call for, uh, for something to do with business or to earn, no? So for Chua naman, according to Chua, no, in 2018, sa kanyang column sa Manila Times, no, Sabi niya, although I should stress that No Limit Tangere was presented as a presentation of truth, not the truth, whereas this information is presented as reality and news. It was fictionalized story, you know, parang naniniwala din si Chua na it's a fictionalized story. Ibig sabihin, it's a non-fiction and then it turned out into a fiction, no? Uh, so sabi niya, I heard real stories and put them together in characters, caricaturing them for effect, no? like Padre Salve, Padre Damaso, for example, reflected the arrogance, cruelty, and backwardness of the colonial system. Okay, so si Chua, kung titignan natin, parang he also committed the same mistake like Rizal, no? where he highlighted the, what we call the religious, ano, no? parang si Rizal, ganun ang ginawa niya when he annotated uh, siguro mang ganyan mga story, ano, mainig siya na magpuna ng mga ano, okay? So, to continue. So, kay Chua, no, he considered the novel as non-fictions. Ibig sabihin na non-fictions, it is something uh, real, no? Or it is based on reality. Hindi siya katangisip. So, hindi siya fictional. But rather, he gave him a, uh, if, sabi nga niya, he commented, if, fictionalized, no, yung history, wherein result observation, no, about the condition of the Philippines, somehow it's really existing. Kaya lang, yung na parang to make it something na ano siya, uh, of course, kung writer ka, no, sa, uh, if you are a writer, isa sa mga ano mo, yung may exaggeration, and then something na to do also with parang interesting siya, yun ang mga ano mo, di ba, gagamitin elements para maging maganda yung book mo, no? Okay? However, no, meron ding nagko-comment na si Rizal daw was a misogynist. Ano bang misogynist? No? It's different from misanthrope, no? Misanthrope, it's something that uh, you hate Kabalita na na misogynist. Misanthrope, it's referring to a woman who does not like men. Same thing naman sa misogynist, parang 
similar to chauvinism or chauvinism or chauvinist. Yung parang tinitignan mong babae na hindi, hindi comparable sa lalaki. Sabi niya ni Chua, no? So, sabi ni Chua, all these human character were undesirable. So, parang walang maganda. Pero ito, of course, these are the observation of Chua. Sabi niya, si Don, Donya Consolacion was cruel. Tama. Bakit cruel si, ano, si Donya Consolacion, no? Siya yung nagpahirap kay, ano, no? Kay Sisa. No? And then we have Donya Victorina naman wherein he epitomized the colonial mentality, yung parang gusto niyo maging Spanish-like, no? Comparable sa work ni Soto yan, yung si Miss Patupat, no? Sisa was too weak, no? She became mad or deranged, no? And and what people think as a symbol of the Philippines and the Filipina, a Filipino woman. Same thing, Maria Colara was actually weak and treacherous woman, no? Would not fight for her love and gave way to Padre Salve, her love, our lover, Chrysostomus Ibarra's letter, no, to her, no, which were used to implicate him in, in the revolt, no. Incidentally, the only strong woman in Nolime Tangere was Elias' lover, si Salome, who was taken out of the novel for the sake of cascading, yung minensyong ko kanina, no, inalis pa yun, okay? So, these are some of the observation ni, ano, ni Chua, but, of course, the time, we, we can, ano naman, uh, we can, affirm or clarify bakit ganun yung perspective ni Rizal no bakit yung babae parang napakahina niya no or something bakit hindi maganda yung niya pinapakita of course si Doña Pia Salve yung nanay ni Maria Clara ganun din no hindi lang sinani dito kasi uh, pinakita doon sa Nolly Messenger na nirexya ni Padre Damaso okay ganun din yung kanyang tiya si Tia, tia Isabel no this is my add on no si Tia Isabel pinapakita na nag 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 ano siya nag kukumilit siyang makapagsalita ng Spanish na hindi masyadong marunong no reality yon no in the time of Rizal kasi very patriarchal yung society and of course in the time no somehow in our history in the past women are not allowed to educate themselves no or they are not allowed to attend school so tendency kaya naging ganoon no and yung yun nga, the patriarchal society dictates that the women are under men. Yung nga, yung pagiging misogynist or what we call yung parang chauvinism or chauvinist, no? Which the opposite of misanthrope. Okay, to continue. So still, we are still on Chua, no? So the novel No Limit Tangere, no? <clears throat> Uh, according to Austin Gray, you know, the book had now become less an effort to arouse the Spanish sense of justice than a means of education for Filipinos by pointing out their shortcomings. Like this government, maybe due to quite as much as to hypocrisy, and then the servility and undeserving character of the people as it to the corruption, like, uh, like corruption, you know, tyranny, and cruelty of the rulers. Yun naman ang emphasis ni, ano, no, ni Austin Craig. So kasi, uh, there are argument, if Rizal wrote No Limit Tangere for the Filipinos, how come he wrote it in Spanish? Okay, so siguro yung nagko-comment na yun, they based their, ano, binabasi nila yung kanilang, ano, na paniniwala, eh, probably parang modernization, no? Uh, binabasi nila yung kanilang observation sa, sa ngayon, no? Sa kasalukuyan. Ano ba yung kasunukuyan natin? Hindi naman lahat ng Pilipino ay nakakapagsalita ng Ingles, no? O nakakaintindi ng Ingles. So similarly, no, in the time of Rizal, not all Filipinos uh, was uh, was able to uh, read Spanish and understand Spanish, no? Pero somehow they can they can and then yung ay mga babae, they are not allowed, no, to go to school. So probably they don't understand Spanish, okay? So to continue, so sabi ni Chua, could it be that even if Rizal was not writing for Filipino per se, so kung ang noli daw ay hindi naman intended for the Filipino, he was not just exposing the ills of colonialism, but also giving a necessary wake-up, you know, giving a necessary wake-up call for Filipinos to change their bad attitude at the time. Kaya nga yung title ng ano no limitan yung kanyang ano article no na it's something to do na no limitan chere na for Filipinos no or something 
uh, a wake up call for the Filipinos, you know. Okay, to continue. So, according naman kay General Jose Alejandrino, no, uh, okay, kilala nyo ba si Jose Alejandrino? When Rizal was in Paris, no, meron, di ba, nahihirapan siyang umanap ng ano, in 1889, no, uh, yes, 1889, there is what we call the universe, 1889 to 1889, there is a universal exposition. And of course, somehow, dun siya, na, dun siya nag stay no, sa Paris. Kaya lang, to get ka roommate niya si Jose Alejandrino that time, no, uh, that time they moved, no, from Paris, they moved to Germany, no, in Berlin, no, kasi mahal yung ano sa Paris. So, si Jose Alejandrino, no, nung nag survive siya, of course. And then he became a general also in the Philippines, no, and known, uh, okay. Wait lang, no, kung, yes, kapampangan din si Jose Alendrino from Arayat, no. And sabi nga, kasi roommate niya si Rizal noon, no, bata pa siya noon. Yun nga, may kwento nga silang nakakatuwa noon, nag, na, nag, ano sila, what they call this one, nagtitiped, no, they live a frugal life, wherein they have a, ba, uh, a box of biscuit, uh, this is a box of biscuit, and then they they cook on the pancit you know, that time. Kaya lang, uh, hindi, kumbaga, kung yung box of biscuit na yan, uh, for one month siya, si Alejandrino, uh, let's say three weeks pala, naubos na yun sa kanya kasi bata pa siya that time. No? So what Rizal do, senior niya sa kanya. So ano bang, sina so yun ang pinagsamahan nila. No? So they have, ano talaga. Pero at that time, is taking engineering. No? At bata pa si Jose Alejandrino noon. Sabi ni Jose Alendrino, he described Rizal, the Prince of Freedom, ano, sabi niya, Rizal told him, so sinabi daw sa kanya, that he regretted killing Elias in its novel. Okay? So, no limit ang jere, di ba, in the last part, chapter 60 to something, no, uh, namatay si Elias. And that was also the time when Elias met, no, uh, or asked Basilio to burn their body in exchange of gold, no, or what gold jewelry. Sinabi daw ito ni Rizal kay Alejandrino, Rizal told Alejandrino that he regretted killing Elias since its novel. Then, uh, Ibarra who continued on become Simon, no, the jeweler, in his second novel, eventually failed in his plan to overthrow the Spaniard because he was an egoist who only decided to provoke the rebellion when he was hurt in his interest. His person, his love, and all other things a held cigarette. Oh, okay. No, kumbaga, titignan natin to. It's a living testimony, no, ni Jose Alendrino. Kumbaga, nagkukwentuhan sila ng Rizal, then nabanggit sa kanya na, siguro, natanong din ni, ano, ni uh, Jose Alendrino na, bakit po ba pinatay si Elias? No, hindi ba siya yung magustong magkaroon ng revolusyon? And then, same thing si Ibarra. Bakit mo, bakit din namatay si Ibarra? Or nag-change, naging Simon, no? Okay. So those are some no, of the critics as regard to what we call to the novel No Lime Tangere, no? Okay, to continue. So Chua himself no, examine, uh, of course, may diary si Rizal, natatanda yung in our discussion, no? Uh, in, nung nakarating siya ng shoota, the, cap, the Captain Alemani, si Captain Alemani, he confiscated his diary. So probably the diary, they want to use it as an evidence against him, no? Pero wala sila nakita, then binalik din sa kanya, no? So sabi ni Elias, according to Rizal, uh, sorry, sabi ni Chua, according to Rizal, Elias should have led the revolution because he was a novel character, patriotic, self-denying, and disinterested. Necessary qualities of a man who lead a revolution, okay? So, na-prove na natin na kasi sabi nila, Rizal did not participate in the revolution. Oo, hindi siya nag-participate physically. But, he is an instrument to awaken the Pilipinos in the in, on, on the characters no, of the novel No Limitangere, kung nakikita ninyo. No? So, yun ang, kung ex we will examine the novel himself, kaya nga ginamit ding evidence yan. No? Diba? There are 15 exhibits and these 15 exhibits are referring to the work of Rizal, kasama yung uh, what we call Kundiman, No Limitangere, El Pili, uh, uh, and then other article that he wrote in La Solidaridad, no? So, kasama lahat yan. 
Sabi ni Chua, no? According to Chua, so FYI, no? Chua is a historian, no? Professor in La Salle, no? And oh, ano rin siya kapampangan, no? So pwede rin natin tawagin na si Kung Chua, no? So Noli Metanjere was less, sabi niya, so Noli Metanjere was less a condemnation of our colonial masters than a work than a warning to us Filipinos, no? It is also about our faults. Ito yun, no? And weaknesses. Ito yung, ano niya, yung no limit tangere, it's, all, it's also emphasizing the faults of the Filipinos, no? It is also about our faults and weaknesses. <clears throat> so we read it not just for history, but read it with fresh eyes of the present, no? Okay. Pero ito yung inaano, no? Parang kinocomment na. Pero hindi natin dapat yan, no? For Rizal once noted, sabi niya, the slaves of today will be the tyrants of tomorrow. Tama. We should ask how much of the social cancer still exists in our very soul today. Pero parang yung sinabi ni Rizal na yun na the slaves of today will be the tyrant of tomorrow, parang hindi nangyayari sa atin yan, no? Although nagiging tyrant yung ibang Pilipino sa kapwa nila Pilipino. Pero this is evident from the Chinese, no? And also the black, the black Americans, no? Ganun din sila. Kasi before in their history, they are slaves. Now they are the tyrants. So yung Chinese, di ba? Uh, sa previous discussion natin, sila talaga yung parang pinaka nasa mababang antas, no? And they are considered as slaves. Okay, to continue. Now, so, as you can see, this is the original cover of No Limit Tangere. At, and it was Rizal himself who made the cover, no? May ginawa, maroon gising mag-drawing si Rizal, no? E, uh, kaya yan ang ano niya. Now, let's try to examine ano bang mga ibig sabihin na linagay ni Rizal. Yan, yung mga nakikita yun dyan. Unayin natin yung cross. So, ano ba yung cross? What sim? Okay. The cross represents suffering or yung frailocracy, no? Dominance of the Catholic Church. Yan, no? Yun ang pinapakita sa Noli Metangere. So probably, makikita nga dyan na nandiyan si Padre Damaso, Padre Salve, Padre uh, Sibayla, Padre Florentino, si Padre Irene, no? Ang daming na mention na pari doon, no? And of course, they are not uh, just priests, but they are something powerful, no? Like Padre Damaso, of course, considered as the antagonist, the mortal enemy of Ibarra. How about the silhouette of a woman, no? Or Filipino women. So probably, uh, yung iba, they said that is Maria Clara, tama. Of course, this is also the representation, no? Of the Filipino women during the time, no? And what about that? Yung nasa iba ba, yung uh, wearing kasak. No? So, ibig sabihin ng kasak yung parang sutana, no? So, ano naman ang sinisumbulo ng kasak na yan, no? So, man in a kasak represent priests who use religion in the dirty way. No? So, sa cover pa lang ng Noli Metangere, mapapasal ka na, no? Parang, oh, bakit may ganito to? Ano bang ibig sabihin nito? Parang ganon, no? So, these are just some, no? So, to continue, no? Something to do with the facts about Noli Metangere, So what about that, no? Yung pomelo blossom or laurel leaves, laurel leaves, ano naman ang sinisimbolo noon? It represent honor and fidelity. Okay? So hindi lang basta-basta dinagay ni Rizal yan, no? Kumbaga, i-nandyan uh, yan because they have significance on the novel himself, no? So from pomelo blossom and laurel leaves, and laurel leaves, ano pa dinagay niya? Yan, yung sunflower. So the sunflower naman represent hope and enlightenment. And then of course yung chain, no, tanikala. Ano na ba yung, of course, literally alam natin kung ano yung chain represent slavery or restriction or captivity under the Spanish rule. Okay? Now to continue examining, it's what we call cover. So I hope you can follow no uh in our pacing. And just remind me if if this very fast pa or okay lang, no? So, just comment lang kung nag ano kayo, unmute your mic and then say something kung may gusto kayo sabihin, no? Yan, ano yan? So, what does the torch, no? Yung burning torch naman represent rage and passion, no? Pag sinabi natin rage and passion, yung parang 
they are burning inside na gusto nilang makipagdigma o gusto nilang ano yung katapangan nila no their fortitude and their passion to ano to engage in revolution and then of course yung whips o yung latigo no it's something to do with it represent cruelties or miseries sempre no yung ginagawa nila noon what about the bamboo ano stalks no Okay, so imagine na isip pa ni Rizal na i-draw niyo mga yan, no? ilagay dyan. So the bamboo stock represent resiliency. Of course, that is the resiliency of the Indians or the Filipino. So somehow it's so a great determination, determination wherein the Filipino cannot be sway easily. Hindi sila madaling sumuko, no? Numalaban sila. Kaya nga si Rizal, uh, he once used the pen name, di masalang, no? It means you cannot sway him or something to do with resiliency. And of course, the element of Guardia Civil, it simply represents the under-colonial rule of Spain, or we are under the power or authority of Spanish rule. So, na mention na natin yung mga ano, no? those are the different what we call uh, symbols, uh, wherein they are part of the cover of Noli Metangere, the original Noli Metangere. You know? And of course, nakasulat din dyan, may nakasulat dyan, no? So I'm um, I'm a pat, uh, patriot no, to my fa fatherland something like that no Okay any concern or questions Eighteen eighty seven no uh, nung natapos ni Rizal yung kanyang nobela no its first novel no Rime Tangere so probably he insisted no, that, that he want to go home. So for the first time, he returned to the Philippines after five years of journey in Europe. No? So umuwi siya. Ano ba yung reason niya? Bakit siya umuwi? Of course, siyempre, may pamilya siya. He want to know his family. Of course, he also want to know kung ano yung nangyayari as regard to its writing, no, Limit Angere. Ano nga bang nangyayari that time? So one of the parang agenda ni Rizal why he went on no so to know no or to prove <clears throat> that the Noli Metangere does not contain any subversive ideas kasi it was been accused no or something inaano siya na meron daw siyang subversive ideas no parang ganon no so Rizal went to Manila palace to prove the subversive ideas of Noli Metangere to the governor general at the time si Emilio Terero and Terero asked him about the novel, no? So, kaya lang wala siyang dala that time. Kaya Rizal went to the, he went to what we call to its friend in Ateneo de Municipal, na met niya ulit si Padre Francisco de Paulo Sanchez, na kanyang advisor, the first teacher niya si Padre Osebek, and then nandun din si Padre Federico Faura, no? But in our previous discussion, hindi siya na-mention. Wherein si Padre Federico Faura, no? Uh, Nag-comment siya, sabi niya, adventure, ano ito yun? Sabi niya, Everything in it was the truth. But then he added, no? But for this truth, you may lose your head for it. Parang sinabihan na siya ni Padre Pedro Icopaura dahil sa sinunat mong to, magagalit sa iyong mga Kastila at mamamatay ka, no? So probably, ganun nga yung nangyari, no? Which somehow, uh, may basis naman si Padre Pedro Icopaura. So from this priest, hindi rin nakakuha ng copy si Rizal. And then later on, uh, may nakita siya parang one of its friends gave him a copy. Actually, the time, no, bawal basahin yung Noli Metangere. And once you have been caught reading the novel, you will be, ano, uh, you will be incarcerated. Ikukulong ka or they will arrest, arrest you, no? They will arrest you then, torture you. Kaya ginagawa ng mga Pilipino that time, the more na pinagbabawal siya, of course, ganun naman talaga yung mentality, di ba? Or yung parang psychological effect niya. The more it is being prohibited, the more you became curious or interested. So, ganun nangyari. So, in the midnight, no, kaban tulog na lahat, even uh, the Spaniards, no, so the Filipino and their closed door, and then, palihim nilang binabasa yung No Limitangere. Of course, not everyone can read, no, kasi it's written in Spanish. Now, uh, that time, the Governor General Emilio Terrero, no, in Malacanang Palace, no, he described him as liberal minded. Ex, uh, real mind and executed, no? And sabi niya was uh, something, there is nothing wrong with the novel, no? Hindi daw, it does not contain down na subversive ideas. So because of that, he found out that Rizal life was in jeopardy, no? Kaya, yun nga, namensyon ko na to, no? Kaya inasign niya yung isa sa mga lieutenant na to 
to bodyguard no or somehow serve as a bodyguard of Rizal. So in a sign niya si uh, Don Jose Tabielde and Grande. Na somehow, nung in our previous discussion, pinipili si Rizal kung sino yung magiging lawyer niya, yung pinsan ni Jose Tabielde and Grande. No? Si Lieutenant Luis Tabielde and Grande. Okay? So naging friend niya ni Rizal. No? Later on, for sa alis na si Rizal. No? So he just stay six months, no? in what we call in the Philippines, in Calamba, no? Kasi bakit six months lang? After that, mag-travel na siya, no? And in, of course, in Calamba, he started writing his second novel, El Filibusterismo. Now, among the critics, no? Yung mga nagkikritics sa, sa work ni Rizal, one of them is Monsignor Pedro Payo, no? Siya yung nag-initiate wherein he sent a copy ka, kay pa, sa pa-director ng UST kay Gregorio Echevarria for examination. So, nagkataon nun, uh, as regard to prelocracy, yung agawan ng mga posisyon ng mga pare, so, nagdo-dominate yung mga Dominican, no? Kaya si, sila yung na-involved dito. And the father rector, no? Si Gregorio Echevarria in UST, ito yung kanya examination. Siyempre, pwede natin sabihin, this is bias or this is also facts, no? Ito rin yung reality. Sabi ni Father Rector Gregorio Echeverria, yung novel daw no, ni Metangere, it's heretical. It's something that is against church belief. No? Of course, there is a chapter na, na nandun din yung herehe, no? or what we call yung mga against the church, or something people who does not believe on, or something would do a uh, thing which is against church belief. No? Pangalawa, sabi ni Father Gregorio Echevarria, it's something that is impious and scandalous in the religious order. So, scandalous daw siya, and then hindi siya, hindi siya righteous, no? It's impious. And then third, it's something that is anti-patriotic, wherein it contain is, uh, it is something that is subversive of public order, no? And fourth, somehow it is injurious, no, to the government of Spain, Political, uh, wherein it can, no, it can uh, create chaos or disorder in terms of the politics in the Philippines. So those are the findings of Father Gregorio Echeverria, no? Okay, to continue. In December 29, 1887, another uh, priest or religious order, si Father Salvador Font of Agustin Curate of Tondo, and the head of the permanent commission censorship found no limit no limit contained in subversive ideas and against the church and Spain. So it will examination with Father Font, Salvador Font. Kaya, what did Father Font do? Father Font recommended the prohibition of its importation, reproduction, and circulation. So as I mentioned a while ago, no, the more it has been prohibited or the more na pinagbabawad siya, so lalo nagiging interested yung mga tao. Or, pwede rin natin, no, on the other side, uh, pwede on the other way uh, around, pwede natin sabihin na strategy rin to ng mga pare, no, para kumita. Kasi pag, pag ganyan, mabibili yung ano. Sabi nga ni Fernando Cano, no, isa sa mga kaibigan ni Rizal, uh, the banning of Noli, raise its cost from 5 pesetas that is equivalent to 1 peso that time uh, in bilang siya na double no na time is 50 siya wherein from 5 pesetas the novel no limit angere became 250 pesetas no kung babasihan babasihan natin to parang pinagkitaan din no yung novela ni Rizal sino bang kumita nito no of course those who publish it no okay so those are some things that happened no during the time no nung nasa Pilipinas si Rizal. And another uh, priest no si Padre Jose Rodriguez no uh, the prior of Guadalupe published the questiones uh, the sumo no uh, interest to Blasnoli and the anti spanish writing. So si Padre Jose Rodriguez uh, so probably kapanganan pa naman niya no uh, Parang siya yung parang contemporary, or rather, sorry, not contemporary. Parang siya yung equivalent ni Padre Damaso in the novel, no? Pero of course, nauna na si Padre Damaso kay Padre Rodriguez. Pero siya yung mortal enemy in result that time. 
So, si Padre Rodriguez, o si Rodriguez, no? He wrote the questiones de sumo interest, or what we call a, some question of interest that is in English, no? Where it consists of eight pamphlets, no? And these are the eight pamphlets ne, uh, na nandyan yung por que no los si de leer? Why should I not read them? Referring to the work of the Spaniard, no? Guardianos de los por que? Beware of them. Y que me rige usted de la peste? And what can you tell me of late, no? Por que triumphan los impíos? Why do the impious triumph, no? Creo usted que de veras no hay purgatorio. Why do you think there is really no purgatorio? Ay, ho, no hay infierno. Or no hell. Okay? Please mute your anak na gano tayo, okay? Que le parece a usted de los libelos? Why do you think this is uh, this of this level? Confession or condensation or convention or damnation. Now, these eight pamphlets at the time were forcefully, you know, forced, or were in all the Catholic Filipino or India who attend the masses or the mass, they were compelled to buy this pamphlet and probably strategy ni Padre Jose Rodriguez to discredit Rizal and the other anti-Spanish anti writing, no? Of course, kagbinang dyan si Marcelo H. Del Pilar, no? Okay, to continue. And of course, during that year, no, no limitangere also discredited in Spanish court, as on the Spanish court. Ito yung manang discredit. April 1, 1888, si General Cito Salamanca. April 12, 1888, si General Luis M. De Pando. And on June 11, si Senor Fernando Vida. And in 1890, January, si Vicente Barantes. Of course, Vicente Barantes is a writer, no, Spanish writer. Spanish Ac uh, Academician of Madrid, no? Wherein somehow he bitterly criticized Noli Matanger in article La España Moderna, no? So, discredit nila yung novela ni Rizal. But on the other way around, or yeah, kung, kung discredit may nakikritik, the more na parang naging interested yung mga tao, di ba? On July 18, 1888, in Singapore, a Filipino uh, priest, si Padre Vicente Garcia, he used the pen name Usto de Cerederio Maglalang uh, to defend Rizal. No? Si Padre Vicente Garcia, kilas na siyang ano, translator ng, ano, ng work ni Thomas Kimpis. No? Yung <clears throat> about uh, what we call yung work ni Thomas Kimpis, yung, uh, what we call yung kay Christ. No? Padre Rodriguez, uh, one of the critic, no, or something na sinasabi ni Padre Rodriguez na si Rizal daw ay ignorante, no, is an ignorant man. Pero sabi ni Padre Vicente Garcia, Rizal cannot be an ignorant man, no, because he was a graduate in Spanish University and was a recipient of scholastic honors. So, Padre Rodriguez also alleged, no, or inaccused ni si Rizal that he attacked the church in Spain. And sabi ni Vicente Garcia, Rizal does not attack the church in Spain, as Rodriguez claimed, no? Because what Rizal attacked in the Noli Metangere were the bad Spanish official and not Spain, and the bad and corrupt priors and not the church. Tapos, panakot ni Padre Rodriguez, sabi niya, Padre, sabi ni Padre Rodriguez, uh, those who read the Noli commit mortal sin. And natuwa si, ano, no, si Vicente Garcia parang uh, in a logical manner or philosophical way, sabi niya. So since Padre Rodriguez had read the novel, therefore he also commit a mortal sin. No? Parang sa ano, it follows, no? Seketuro. Okay? Any question, concern before I continue? So the popularity of what we call no limit tangere, like the uh, like the work of Morga, uh, somehow turned into different translation. Many writers uh, somehow became interested in the work of Rizal. No, so the novel no limit tangere, yung kanyang first translation was translated in uh, French language or French translation and given a new title, yung Ope de Monet or the Land of the Monks. No, and this one was. Uh, translated to Lucas and Ramon Simpao, no? Okay. And then in 1900, no, an English uh, writer, no, uh, 
uh, Frank Ernest Gannett was one of the earliest English translation of the novel No Limit Tangere, and given the title The Friars and Filipinos, no? And then An Eagle Fight by Mike Durr Phillips Incorporation adapted the novel also, given a new title An Eagle Fight. Okay, so before I continue, no? Uh, I stop uh, sharing Mona, okay? So I'm going to And then I'm... 